Hello everyone, I'm Dion from Dion Video Productions. In this video, we're going to be looking at settings to change in Final Cut Pro before you start editing. Let's get started. Alright, so of course this is somewhat subjective and will change from person to person. However, I've been editing in Final Cut Pro for over six years and in that time have found that there are some settings that I will always find myself going back to and changing whenever I reinstall Final Cut or run it on a new machine. Alright, so I'm going to split this video into two sections. First, we'll be looking at settings that I'll be changing under the preferences menu. And then secondly, we'll be looking at settings that I'll be changing under the window itself. So let's go ahead and start off by looking at the preferences. To access this, go up into the menu bar and under the Final Cut Pro tab, click on preferences. From here, a small window like this will appear and we'll work our way from left to right. Now, first of all, make sure that your timecode display is set to hours, minutes, second, and frame rate, as this will give you the information that is most valuable when editing. Now next we're going to go ahead and skip the editing tab and go straight to the playback tab. Now here under rendering, generally Final Cut will have this on and this is the background render option. Now what this will mean is whenever you make a change to a clip or a element in your timeline, it will automatically render. Now this is great because it can save you a little bit of time and you don't have to worry about manually rendering your project. However, this is also a way to eat up a lot of storage on your local or external drive because every change you make to your clip will have to be re rendered therefore will create more cache and render files which will take up a lot of storage especially in the long run. If you guys want to learn more about this specifically I have a separate video which will show you how to clear and save storage space on your Final Cut Pro library whether you're running on a local drive or an external drive. I'll be sure to leave that linked in the description. But for now, make sure you turn this off. And if you do want to keep it on, make sure you set the start time to just about five or 10 seconds so that it won't render uh, without you wanting to do so. But again, I suggest keeping this off and to manually render, you simply press Control Shift R. And of course, alternatively, you do not always have to render. There are many instances where, for example, where you're using text, you can just work with them and see them fine in the timeline without rendering and just wait to export, in which case it will automatically render when exporting. Moving a little bit further down in this menu, we have the player background option. Now as standard, this will be set to black and I always like to change mine to checkerboard. Now checkerboard, if you're familiar with photo editing software, is a grid-like pattern that's made up of white and gray squares and this will show you a transparent layer. Now automatically, this will be exported as a black layer so you won't suddenly have a different background on your video, but again, to me, makes more clear what is an actual black layer or what is the background. This will also allow you to export PNGs from Final Cut Pro with a transparent background. If you guys want to learn more on that, I have a separate tutorial on this, which I will also leave linked down below. Up next, let's go to the import tab. And over here we have under the file section, we have the option to either copy to library or to leave the files in place. Now I always recommend you copy your files to your storage location. For example, if you're editing off an external drive, you want to make sure that your files and your original media is also on that external drive, as otherwise taking this drive and plugging it into a different computer will result in missing media. So to make sure that Final Cut makes a copy of any files you import, make sure that copy to library and storage location is selected. And finally, over here on the right, we have the destinations tab. Now, standard Final Cut will have quite a few different destinations and destinations are really different ways of exporting your video. However, there are far more than necessary. In fact, I only have three. So you'll see that if I go into the share menu, you'll see I only have three options. And let me explain why I have each of them. Now, first of all, we have the master file option. And what this will allow you to do is export the video in the highest possible quality, either through ProRes or in the web optimized version, which is through the H.264 Kodak, which is the one I use for most exports. This is an essential destination to have. So I always have this on the top of my list. Now, just below that, we have the option to save an actual frame. You can actually export a picture out of or an image out of Final Cut. So whether you want that to be a JPEG or a PNG, you can change that in your settings as well. But this is a useful option to have, especially for example, if you're creating a thumbnail for YouTube or say a, you want a still of, of, of one of your images to use as an Instagram post or for social media, I highly recommend this option and this will not be uh, listed as standard. So be sure to click and drag this into your menu if you don't have it yet. To do this, you simply click and drag the destination from the options list here and place it with your other list of destinations. 
And finally, we have the YouTube and Facebook export. Now, Final Cut will actually allow you to export and upload directly to YouTube or Facebook and actually also allow you to add the titles and descriptions and such. In a recent Final Cut update, they've actually made this even better than before and I found this to be relatively reliable and sometimes I do like to use this. So this is also a useful feature to have. Again, simply click and drag this in if you wish to add it. As for all these other options, they are complete. it's completely up to you, of course, as to what you like to add, but any of the Apple devices exports are simply not that useful as again, using the master file will give you all the functionality and also the range when wanting to export. If of course you wanna learn more about exporting, whether that be in HD or 4K or to different formats, I also have a separate, more extended video on that, which I will also leave linked. So that's it for the preferences menu in Final Cut. Now, let me go ahead and show you some of the settings that I changed for the actual window itself. Now, one of the first things I always do is I like to expand my audio levels. Now, the audio levels over here display what the uh, what the ranges are for the audio for both the left and right channel or multiple channels if you have them. But this is quite a small viewer. And especially if you are editing the audio, you want to make sure it's right below that or right between that negative six to negative 12 range and doesn't peak far above or below that. To do this, you simply click on the icon and over here on the right, we have an expanded version of it. Now this is relatively large. So I usually like to make this a little bit thinner. As you can see, we can simply click and dra drag this to the right. And there we go. I usually have something like this and it makes it much easier to see the levels while I'm editing. And again, also shows you the actual numbers for the decibel levels, making it much easier to balance your audio. Next, I like to change the viewer size to fit. Now, as standard, you'll probably have a fixed percentage. Let's say we have 100%, and you'll see regardless of how I move the window, this will stay fixed. Now, and there are, of course, instances where this is nice, but for example, if you make the viewer very small and the uh, project line very quick or very large, you'll find that this actually cuts off some of your footage and you have to drag and move to see it. If, however, you change this to fit, Final Cut will automatically scale the viewer to match the space you give it. So as you can see, as I expand it, it will also get larger and therefore show you more of your video. Now, I find this to be useful as, of course, you want to see as much of your video as possible. Do remember, though, that whenever you go above 100%, like in this case, it will technically be a slightly lower resolution as, of course, it is expanded larger than what it natively is. And last but not least, in the top right of the corner under the view menu, we have the option to under quality to play as better quality or as better performance. Now, as to which one I recommend, this really depends on your machine and your workflow. If you find your timeline is running a little bit slow and a bit laggy, I highly recommend changing to better performance. You'll see a slight drop in quality, but will give you smoother frame rates, which is great, especially if you're doing tighter frame by frame editing. On the other hand, though, if you want a better view of what your project would look like once it's exported, I recommend changing to better quality. So this is one I find myself changing in between from time to time, but it's a very useful setting to change depending on the circumstances that you're in. And last but not least, we're gonna be looking at a few settings in the window that I oftentimes will be changing while I edit. So depending on the kind of project I work with, uh, but I think it's important to showcase these options so you know what they are and how they work. So starting off here in the bottom right hand corner, we have the option to turn on or off video and audio skimming. Now, as you can see, it is currently on as highlighted by the blue. And what this allows me to do is move the cursor above the timeline here. And you'll see that as I do so, uh, I get a preview in the viewer and also an audio preview as you can see here as indicated by the levels and this will allow me to quickly browse and see and hear what I am working with. I find this to be a very useful feature and keep this on at all times. The only instance in which I would suggest you turn this off is if say you're running on an older MacBook or say you are working with very heavy footage and your computer is kind of struggling to keep up or it's lagging a little bit. Turning this off will generally increase the performance as again when I move the mouse in this case nothing happens and if I want to preview I'll have to manually move the actual play ahead marker uh, back to see the footage. But again, in most cases, I suggest keeping this on. Over here on the right, we have basically the same option, except this will allow you to turn on or off skimming for audio in particular. So as you can see, if I currently have it off, you'll notice the levels are not moving as I skim. Whereas if I press it again and turn it on, you'll see they start to move. Sometimes this is useful. Uh, in this case, I would actually keep it off because here we're just working with scratch audio, basically just the audio from the, uh, the content of the box. And I don't necessarily want to hear this while I'm editing. So I generally would, in this case, keep this off. Over here on the right, we have the snapping function. And what this basically allows for is your cursor to automatically snap to the nearest element. So as you can see right here, I have, for example, a marker. And you'll see that as I move the mouse over, 
it eventually snaps over. So this makes it a little bit easier, in my opinion, to edit quickly, as for example, your mouse will automatically align with whatever, uh, whatever element in the clip you are going for, whether that is a marker or a text layer or even a cut. For example, I can add a cut here and you'll notice as I move the mouse closer, it snaps into place and the same thing here with the end of the clip. So I find this to be particularly useful uh, as you don't have to pay too close attention as to where exactly your mouse aligns as this will kind of snap it into place. So again, for most people, I would suggest keeping this on. Uh, just to show you what it's like off here, you'll see that the mouse now moves freely. And if I want to align this perfectly with this marker, for example, I have to zoom in quite far uh, to make sure the frame like right here is exactly matched. But again, I prefer to keep this on as it overall just allows for a uh, smoother and faster experience. Now finally over here on the right we have some options regarding how your project is displayed. So first of all we have the ability of course to zoom in and out but you can also do this uh, using your trackpad to simply pinch or you can use a scroll wheel on your mouse. Uh, alternatively I like to use shift Z as this will allow you to expand the project and bring it into frame uh, basically to a point where the entire project can be fit uh, in the screen. So you can see if I zoom further out press command or shift Z it will, uh, it will expand and if I zoom further in Shift Z again, and it will bring it back to that same position. This is great to quickly snap out and get an overview uh, of, of your entire project and say move to a different section. And beneath that, we have a few display options for the project itself. This is a setting that I find myself changing throughout the project, depending on what part I am working on. This will be the most common view that I have where you can see both a preview of the video as well as the audio. However, as I go along, I will change this. If for example, I'm working on audio, I will select the uh, option here on the far left. And as you can see all we have in frame now are the audio waves and just beneath that we have the option to expand or make the project smaller so as you can see we can make it very small for audio of course this is useful to keep quite large uh, you also have the option to show only video and then you have sort of a minimized option uh, view as well but again in most cases i like to have it like this make it a little bit smaller to allow for multiple layers to be stacked but like i said this is a set of settings that i will change while i edit so it just basically allows you to focus more on a specific part clip or audio uh, or element in your timeline and make that editing process smoother and really just more comfortable allowing you to get more done in less time all right, so that is it guys. These are the first essential settings that I change every time I reinstall or launch Final Cut on a new machine. I hope this helped you out. If you have any questions, be sure to leave them down below. Like and subscribe for more content like this. Be sure to check out my full Final Cut Pro playlist. Thank you for watching.